Today for Mousetrap Monday, we're going to test out one of the craziest and most requested mousetraps that I've ever been asked to feature. It's a mouse cannon with the trigger right in front of the barrel. It's called the original 1862 mouse killer. Although the one I have here was not made in 1862, it's a modern replica made by the Dixie Gunworks. Now I love learning about Civil War history. I've gone to reenactment shows, seen the cannons go off, see the battles. It really gives you a sense for what soldiers went through back then. And even though our mousetrap's a replica, I do have an original Civil War rifle from 1862, and the technology is pretty much the same. So to better understand our mousetrap before we shoot it, I'm first gonna show you how to load and shoot an original Civil War rifle. Here it is, my 58 caliber three band rifle. This one's dated 1862, and it's made by Colt. These are known as black powder rifles or muzzle loaders. They're called that because to load it, you pour the powder down the barrel, then put a patch with your bullet and seat it with the ramrod. Now down below is an opening known as a nipple, and there's a hammer. When you pull back the hammer, you can place your cap, pull it back all the way, and when you pull the trigger, the hammer will slam down on the cap, ignite the powder, and fire the gun. Now before cap locks, like on our Civil War rifle, they used another method to fire guns, known as flint locks. Here's a flint lock with a piece of flint on the hammer, and it's designed to strike this metal. When it does, it will make a spark. You put the powder down below, that will ignite, light the powder in the barrel, and shoot the gun. So imagine putting powder right there, we'll pull that back, and then strike it. But as you can see, everything's exposed. There's more of a chance for it to foul. So a cap lock is much more reliable. Now this is the cap right here. When it's struck, it makes a spark. It goes down in the nipple. So we'll seat that and pull the trigger. That's very loud. And that's what it looks like when it's been shot. Here's what the black powder that will be ignited in the barrel looks like. People have been making black powder for hundreds of years out of a few basic ingredients, including sulfur and carbon, which makes a very dirty and smelly smoke that's corrosive to metal. If you don't clean your gun every time you shoot it, you'll damage it. But when lit, the black powder creates pressure pushing the bullet out of the barrel. Now there were several different bullets that were used during this time period. I have a sample of them, so let's take a look. These were all dug on battlefields. In the corner, there's an original percussion cap, very similar to the ones we've been using. And our mouse cannon is right here, a 32 caliber. These go up to 69 caliber, and some of them were pretty wicked, like the buck and ball. Now the rifle I have is a 58 caliber, and they came in many different styles and shapes. These bullets were made when they poured melted lead into a mold, and they come in two basic types, a round ball and a mini ball. The mini balls are quite varied. This one is cone shaped with grooves on the side and a hollow base. When it's shot out of the barrel, it expands, grips the rifling and spins, making it more accurate. Now that we know about bullets and black powder, let's go load our rifle. We'll start by pouring our black powder down the barrel. And then we have our patch and our lead ball. And then we'll use the ramrod to push the bullet to the base of the barrel. It's all loaded, now we just need the cap. Time to shoot. So now that you know how to load and fire a Civil War rifle, we're ready to shoot our mousetrap. There's a spring on back that pushes on the hammer. When released, it will slam down on the cap sitting on the nipple and ignite the powder in the barrel. The trigger's up front, you lift that up, and there's a sear right here with a groove that catches it. Now there's a trigger that fits in between the hammer and the sear, but for safety, we'll first insert the pin. That keeps it from firing. Now here's the trigger pin. Pull it back a little more. Put it in the groove. It's just barely balancing. Pull out our safety pin. It's ready to go. You put the bait in front of the barrel. The mouse will come along. You touch the trigger and it sets off. Now before I put powder in the barrel, I'm first gonna try it with just a cap. First we'll set it. 
Then we'll place a cap on the nipple and gently pull out the safety pin. We are locked and loaded and ready to fire. That worked pretty well. Now let's add some powder in the barrel. Don't want to do too much, just a little bit. I'm also going to place a cloth wad. We are loaded with powder. Let's see what happens. Well, that was a very small amount of powder, but our poor mouse didn't fare too well. He's pretty charred. Now the air here smells like burnt plastic and black powder, which is pretty stinky with the sulfur. There wasn't even a bullet in the barrel, but the fire coming out sure charred the mouse. Now I'm gonna add some more powder in the barrel and add a lead bullet and see what our mouse killer can do. Well, that was fun. Look at the damage. It's burned and a big bullet hole. There's no doubt it would be devastating to any mouse or rat getting shot by the trap. Now I'm curious about the trigger system and if it works on real mice and rats. So I'm gonna set up the motion cameras in the barn and see what happens. But I'm not gonna load it with powder or a bullet for three different reasons. First of all, it's not safe. It's a booby trap or set gun and I don't wanna accidentally hurt someone. Second of all, that powder puts out quite a flame and I don't wanna burn down the barn. And the third reason is, I don't think it's legal. I'm pretty sure you can't leave a cannon unattended that could go off any time. So I'm just gonna add the cap. It will make a big noise, scare the animal, but they're completely safe. So let's go set up the motion cameras and see what happens to the mice, rats, and maybe even a skunk. Well, based on the trail camera footage, I learned a lot about this trap. The first thing is, even though the cap was noisy, the animals didn't seem to mind. They both came right back for the food. The second thing is, if this was loaded, that rat would have been blown away. It would have been shot in the face with fire and a lead bullet ripping through its body. So this trap could be very effective. Now, I also tried this trap with mice. They climbed over it, but didn't set it off. So based on my experience, it was easy for the rats to set off the trigger, but it's not a mouse killer. Now some people might want to buy this trap, but it's not available on any website I've seen. This is a replica, but it's still vintage. I picked it up on eBay for just under $50, but I've seen older examples go for as high as $750 at auction. So at the end of my last video, I explained that viewers from around the world are inventing and sending me some really cool mouse traps. This is a motion sensing rolling log from Germany. I also have a 3D printed mouse trap from Ireland and a bucket mouse trap. By far the most requested, the most talked about was the cannon mouse trap. And the second most popular was the motion sensing rolling log, followed by the 3D printed mouse trap from Ireland. So in my next video, I'm gonna feature this trap from Germany, the automatic rolling log. It's a really cool example. And then we'll do the 3D printed one. I have so many videos I wanna make. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please consider clicking the button right here. I've posted over 550 videos on YouTube and currently I'm posting new videos every Monday. So if you want to see the best videos on how to catch mice, rats, squirrels, chipmunks, moles, voles, and gophers, stay tuned.